Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. I recently tested and reviewed some products for Arteza and I'll leave a link to the video above and below and a link to the playlist at the end. Today I just wanted to show in a little bit more detail how I actually went about creating the two mixed media pieces using the products that I'd tested. So this was actually paper that I got from them. It's a mixed media pad and I'm also using their set of 14 acrylic colours as well as at the end I very briefly use some of their water brushes. So I'm starting here. I took one of the A3 sheets, split it into two because I wanted to test the paper to see if using gesso made any difference. And, you know, what I can say at this point is it didn't. The paper stood up well to not having any gesso at all. But today really is just a kind of speed process. It's not a tutorial anyway. It's just, as I say, to show you in a bit more detail. So I did start by putting some collage down on this piece. And I really wanted to test this, this paper, you know, in a manner of ways with collage with heat, with gesso, etc. So I'm now on to the second piece that had gesso on it and it was just a clear gesso and I do similar here by putting down some collage. And I really just wanted to see how the paint sat over these. Now, as part of reviewing for Arteza, they have offered a discount code so long for those that want to make use of that and there's full details of that in the description box below. So here I'm starting with some yellow ochre. I'm adding in some matte medium. What I want to do here is really just to create what you might call a wash. I just want to get some colour down on the paper and you'll see that, uh, see that I do each piece in different colours. So using yellow ochre here, thinned down just to get that wash down. I really just wanted to lay colour down here. And just using quite a soft brush, moving it backwards and forwards, not looking for an even effect in any way at all. So with this one, I'm taking the phalo green and I'm going to do a very similar process. So just using the phalo green, some of the matte medium and again I'm going to put that down. Now you can create a wash with water but if you use something like a matte medium it, it's a better medium to use because water can start to have a different effect on paint so where possible I like to use matte medium but that said, I have just used water before to create washes. So, got them both done and then I give them both a dry. Now just taking this little bit of punchinella and I'm going to take some of the Mars black paint and I'm just getting some stenciling down here just for a bit of interest. Next, I'm taking some titanium white and I'm just going to put this directly onto the page and I'm going to take my brayer and just work this out a bit. And all I'm doing here is knocking back some of that original colour and some of the collage that's sitting at the bottom. So a great mixed medium technique, this, I, I think, anyway. Uh, just helps to build those layers and of course again I'm thinking about how I'm testing the paper and getting lots of lovely layers down. So I use the same technique on both sheets. Now 
Next I did some gel printing, some mono printing, and I have a separate video on that showing the detail of that. So again I'll link that above and below. And these were the sheets that I, I printed. I wanted to use some of these again as collage on my two mixed media pieces. And a lot of the pieces I had actually done on deli paper or greaseproof paper because I wanted to have a kind of translucent effect. And of course it all depends on how, how thick the paint is that you put on. But here I'm taking this piece that had the burnt umbers, I think it had some of the greens in it, and golds. And I thought that would go nice against the ochre background. So I'm taking one piece and I want to cut it into three pieces but I want it uneven but roughly three pieces of a kind of similar size so that's why I'm using the, the ruler. I wanted a straight edge down each side and just taking the, the straight e edges off top and bottom. and looking at how I might arrange these. This was very much a kind of intuitive piece. I didn't set off with anything in mind and really it just developed as it went along. And really loving the colours in the piece of collage that I'm putting down. Although you will see later that I go over it a bit and I do lose a bit of that colour but, you know, I could have left it as is, but I wanted it to blend in a bit. So just using a, a plastic card just to smooth it out. And I just glued it down using some of the, the matte medium again. So now looking at my other piece with the phthalo green. And this piece of collage has, I think it was a mix of kind of phthalo green, perhaps a bit of the phthalo blue, and also some of the gold. Now this was on a piece of greaseproof paper. And what I did with this one was, when I put it down, I started to scrape on it really hard. So I actually started to lift a little bit of the paint up from the greaseproof paper. And it gave me this nice distressed look. So it really blended into the background. And in some ways I think it looks very much like one piece, as if that was just on, you know, another layer of, of paint. So next I take the gold and what I do is I scrape that onto the piece to create almost just a band across the bottom. And just scraping some lines into it, wanting very much to see what sits below it, so not making it too thick a layer, but this one is actually semi-transparent anyway. I'm looking at the reds and I decide that what I'll do is to use the scarlet red. And again, I'm just going to create a band across the middle. And you'll see that I still had the gold, some of the gold on my card. So I'm not concerned about the two mixing. And in fact, you'll see that I put some of the red down onto that bottom piece anyway. So this is very much, I say, just a kind of intuitive piece. I didn't have anything particular in mind when I created this. Now putting another gold band at the top and dragging this, making sure that I can see what's underneath. And in a moment what I'll do, I'll take my cloth and a little bit of water and just put that on there and rub back to see some of the detail below. And I like the fact that with the pieces that were sitting underneath, I'm almost getting two different colours now. One's showing the highlight of the red and the other one the highlight of the yellow. Now, I think this is now the... I think it's a burnt sienna. And it's either burnt sienna or burnt umber, I forget now. And just using that, almost kind of distressing the piece in a way. So these are very much abstract pieces, definitely not with anything in mind at this, you, you know, when I started them. And just really painting intuitively and seeing how it goes. So here I'm taking both the phthalo green and the phthalo blue and just using my 
plastic card, really just to make marks. So just kind of lines vertically and horizontally. Uh, scraping a little bit, you can see that it's picking up where there was texture from the piece that I put down below. And that just all gives it, for you know, as far as I'm concerned anyway, just gives it kind of added interest. So just moving that around. I wanted to create two pieces that were quite different, but what, what I was really intending to do on the day was to use as many of the colours as possible. And, you know, I did manage that through doing the gel printing as well. So here I've taken a piece that had the kind of greens, blues and gold and I'm just cutting this, just tearing it into a very rough circle. Just using that bit of paper just to lift up little bits and pieces of the paint that hadn't yet dried. I could have taken the heat tool over it but I just did it this way. So putting that circle down again, just with some matte medium. Not perfect in shape, but I kind of like the organic shape of it. And although it had very similar colours to the background, I liked the way that it was just standing out that little bit. So again, just smoothing it out a bit with my card. It doesn't need to be entirely smooth, so long as it's got a good bond between the two. And here I'm just using a bit more of the blue and the green and I think I've got a little bit of black in there and just going round the circle just with my brush. Just building up that kind of outer ring. Extending it out. So some of the colours mixing in and some you can see in a little bit more detail. Here I'm taking the titanium white and starting to go around it and it started to feel to me that the colours were kind of taking on the colours of the sea, kind of, although, you know, what it's intended to be, I don't know, it is just an abstract, but I liked I enjoyed actually playing at this point, just playing with the colours and seeing the effect that I was getting. So my first piece, back to it, and I enjoyed working between the two. And just thinking about what we'll do next. So taking some gold, and what I do now is, in the way that earlier I had taken the, the white and breared it on, I'm just doing that with the gold now, so adding yet another layer to it. And I'm almost starting to see those three pieces of collage as almost like standing stones. I guess that's what was kind of coming out. I put a little bit of water down there just to loosen the paint slightly and, and breared it again. Now taking some black and just doing some splatters. And I think I ended up with more on me than I ended up with on the actual page. A few black splatters on this one too. And then I decide this one actually needs white splatters. And I always feel that little bits of black and white just added to things, just it makes the other colours pop. So I've now taken one of my water brushes and I've actually put some white ink into this. And not sure what I was creating there, but uh, just a kind of circle, maybe almost a sun. Now taking another one with some black, just a water soluble crayon, putting that down. And I will take some a white water soluble crayon and just work on that white bit at the top. Now, I do have some more Arteza products to test and review, so I will be bringing another video showing that soon. And I'll be creating something different with that. But I hope you've enjoyed seeing how I pulled these two together. I really did enjoy working with these paints. 
to me they were good quality good value for money so uh, I'll be using them a lot more in future and I really like the way these two pieces turned out not quite sure what I'll do with them but uh, they're sitting there for the time being I may actually mount them onto another larger piece of paper or I may add more to them in the future I'm just not sure at this stage but as I say I hope you've enjoyed seeing this if you do want to take advantage of the discount code it is below it does have an expiry date on it but it is valid for anything on their teaser site so if you use the links below to go to their teaser site you can then look at anything on there and you can use that discount code so as always i thank you so much for watching and as always i say stay safe take care and I hope to see you next time. I'll just show you the end of this and then a still image at the end and that will be it. So thanks. Bye for now.